Hi, my name is Rick Gallantin and I was the lead mechanical designer for the Spitter on Jurassic Park at Stan Winston Studios. And this is some of the artwork from Crash McCreary. He's an amazing illustrator and really allowed us to get a feel for what the character was going to be and gave us a lot of inspiration. And he is a truly phenomenal artist. Here we are hamming it up, trying to figure out the, uh, the frill of the spitter. <laughs> and here's an uh, outline of the spitter next to a raptor. Here's a maquette of a uh, raptor going through some hop motions to get an idea for what the spitter's gait would look like. We ended up modeling it after an ostrich, used uh, real footage from a, a documentary on ostrich movements. We analyzed that frame by frame, came up with this cam-driven mechanism so that the legs would follow the same motion of an ostrich gait. And then we changed to this one where we had a stick coming out of the foot, we were going to be below the floor, and the person who would step and walk, give the character its normal massive gait, would then also control the legs, as, and the feet would land on the floor. There was a channel on the floor that the person would walk underneath. The legs would land on the floor along with you, and you could go left or right leg as you needed to to make it look like it was walking. This was a little free animation of the hip, knee, and ankle, just from the stick on the bottom there. On the stick, there was a controller that allowed you to control the uh, toes. Now here's the uh, first prototype of the neck. I, uh, all I had was a T-Rex skull from something we threw on there to give it an idea that there was a head on the end of this neck mechanism. And in this case, all three joints of the neck, the left and right joints were all tied together, the up-downs were all tied together, so it could only do simple up-down movements, simple left-right movements, and in the final version, all three of these stages were totally independent, so it could do an S-curve at the neck going left and right. Sprung load to take the weight of the head, so each of those three segments, those parallelograms, were sprung differently. The further you got out, the lighter the load got on it, so the springs would get progressively heavier from the head back towards the body, and that would make the whole character kind of float, even without controllers on it give it a really lifelike, natural flexibility and movement. Okay, here's a skin test of the neck. This is a thick one inch or so thick skin on the neck to smooth out those three aluminum neck sections you just saw. This is a test of a paintball mechanism we used to get the spitter to actually spit its venom out at Nedry. And that's our target there. Uh, I believe it was methicillin KY jelly with some food coloring mixed in and he would actually spit from the mouth of the dinosaur. It wasn't a, it wasn't a trick. Here at the uh, Stan Winston Studios, there was no moisture in the air to speak of, and so compressed air shooting out of the mouth looked like nothing. It was invisible. It looked great. But when we got on a stage and there's rain and water everywhere, high humidity, as the compressed air came out, it became a cloud, and that gave away the gags. This is a skinny version of me playing with a frill mechanism. It's a sheet of latex rubber glued onto some support rods that were all hooked to a pulley. And as we activated them, they would swing forward and then rotate out to open the frill up as well as come forward off the neck. So it had to flare out and flare forward at the same time. Here's the tongue mechanism. This is one of the coolest tongues I've ever done. It's a two-stage tentacle mechanism, and the third section was the base of it, which would also rotate up and down. So the tongues would go left and right, up and down, each uh, section of the tongue. And then underneath are those two giant holes, which led to tubing running down through the neck of the creature. And that's where we pump the high-pressure air, which would spit out of its mouth. Here we're practicing some real discreet moves. It's important if, to fine-tune the performance and not just move back and forth really quickly to see that it can actually move, but to follow a character around, to make eye contact with somebody, to size them up. It needs a little work, but it shows a lot of promise. I remember when we finished Batman Returns, we sat in a room, they called us in because we knew we had Jurassic Park, and all the mechanics came in to be assigned characters, and they said, okay, well, who's read the book? And we all pretty much had. Well, who wants to work on the T-Rex? And a bunch of people raised their hands, and they wrote their names down. Who wants to work on the Triceratops, people raise their hands. Who wants to work on the spitter? Well, I had just been in this industry maybe a year, very green, very naive to a lot of the techniques we'll be using, and I raised my hand thinking I was going to be the assistant mechanic to Richard Landon or one of the guys who had been there for a long time. Well, I was the only person who raised my hand, so they wrote my name down, 
and that was it. That's how quickly the decisions were made. That this is your character. You're fully in, fully responsible for it. Go ahead and build it. And um, I kept quiet. And I was scared to death, but I didn't know how much I had bitten off here. And if they knew how little I knew, they would never have given me the assignment. But it turned out well. I was a fast learner. Watched the other guys uh, build things and took cues from them, and it turned out great. So we're doing some tests for Stan and Spielberg here, and we're running it through its paces. So at this point, the spitter was about 80% finished. Here we have a, a more of a test of Shane carrying the weight of the creature, or a, a lot of him, without his skin on it. Shane Mahan in the front, I'm in the back, and to my left is Patrick Shearn. We're all operating this character to give him some motion to see what problems we're going to run into when it wants to tip Shane over. Same rig with the skin on it. Mark Taranko in the back helping out. Shane's putting on the rig. I'm in the red sweatshirt, and Rich Hogan is there helping us lift. So we're going to see what kind of issues we have with, with momentum and inertia as the creature tries to walk. The bundle of cables coming out of his back go to controllers, uh, and those have to travel with the spitter as he walks across the scene. Here's a demonstration of the leg mechanisms. A lot of free movement in the hip, knee, ankle. Shane's demonstrating with the handles on the bottom so he can make the left and right legs move as he wants to while he actually takes a step with his body. The spitter has the same gait as the puppeteer below. And as you can see, as the mass of the spitter moves left and right, kind of torques the uh, puppeteer down below a little bit. Here's the trench and the floor of the set for the spitter. And you can see the floor down below. Alan Scott's working on the knee. Uh, this was the path the spitter would take approaching Nedry on the hill. And Shane would walk underneath the set supporting the creature, and then the rest of us would be upstairs operating the hands and the tail and the head movements. This was the wettest set we've ever been on. We had downpour of rain constantly, water coming down the hill, and it was going under the set, and it was supposed to drain to the LA River. Well, it had flooded and uh, caused a lot of problems. The Spitter was my favorite character to date. Working on Jurassic Park at Stan Winston Studios was an experience of a lifetime. I couldn't have gotten a luckier break. The film was fantastic, the people we worked with were great, and this is one of those films that will last forever. Once again, this is Rick Gallinson. I hope you've enjoyed this exclusive look behind the scenes.